Hey, so today we got this radio that uh, was brought over to me by a friend uh, that belongs to his next door neighbor um, and it belonged to her grandfather. And this is a uh, three band radio by Panasonic. And I'm going to explain the blue tape in a minute. I believe it is a model RF1006MD. Wow. Look at that. <clears throat> that battery compartment is nearly pristine. That's an external power connector that I think the previous owner put in there and then wired it into the battery compartment and didn't use batteries. Look at that. He saved this. He saved this radio. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to say FM sounds great. Let's try AM now. Ooh. Silent. Okay, so there's AM. So the ferrite uh, antenna's in here, so hopefully I can pick up something. I don't get many stations where I am. There you go. AM's working. There's 70s that are just getting into the, the private placements with uh, apartments. So there's the board edge. That, that would plug into a, a board edge um, connector that would be inside that bracket that went underneath the dash of the car. And so you slid this thing in, it would make up the, uh, the power connections. I guess somehow it would disconnect the battery. I'm not sure how it did that. And then uh, apply power from the car. And who knows, it may have also applied, uh, it may have taken the, uh, the speaker as well and gone into the car speaker. Okay, so I got done uh, getting my battery recharged and unloading the SD drive off this camera. While I was doing that, I was looking through the videos to see if they see if they worked. You know, like you never really know, right? And I got to look at the switches I was cleaning. Cleaned the uh, cleaned the switch here. And cleaned uh, the tone control and cleaned the volume control. Cleaned the AVC. AFC. And while I was looking at doing that and checking the volume, make sure that it was clear and you could see stuff more or less and everything. What's this? And it's pretty funny. I'm sitting there holding it like this saying, we're looking at the boardage connector and we're saying, well, we've got to have a way that we can disconnect the power to the from the batteries and apply power from the car battery. How does that happen? Well, what do you think this is right here? Remember, there was a hole in the bottom of the case here that I pointed to earlier and said, maybe this is something else here. Probably not. Well, it had like a little black pad right here. And by now that I've pointed this out, you can probably just see and visualize what's going to happen. So inside of that bracket that you put the, the slid this into, not only did it have a, a board edge connector, that would, the board edge that would snap into this connector, to make up the connections in here, but it must have had a post, and that post would go through that hole in the case and push on that, and <laughs> voila! Now, how many leads are in there? That's a lot of leads on there. So this thing is switching a lot of different things. I'd say it's got power going to it, yes, to switching between the the car power and the 
battery power inside this radio. But if you look at all these leads here, there's almost as many leads in here that are being switched. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to find the wiring diagram from the bracket, but it looks like we've got power. We may have the speaker lead that's transition. I mean, I could take a ohm meter and ohm out, you know, some lines that go to the speaker and buzz them out and see if I got any connections here. But if you could have all those lines, it's kind of like, what else could it be? So I doubt if the antenna goes through there, but it might. But uh, anyway, pretty cool, huh? All right. So time to get cleaning on this thing. I may, I may show some stuff and speed it up. We'll see. do them anyway. Okay, so I got the chassis back into the uh, into the case, and I haven't put the screws into it yet. But I've engaged the uh, AVC control, and that works.
just fine. And then all the pots are lined up. Looks like I've got the switch hooked up correctly. We're going to have to test that before I go too much further. Um, <clears throat> I did do the change out of the wires. This is the one that was gray, if you remember. And this is the one that was red. So I've changed that out for black, which it should be because that's neutral. Sorry, that's uh, negative. And then this is uh, the positive side. And so I've got that for red. So I'll be running that back in together and it'll go into the other half of the case to wire up to that external power jack. Uh, I've got to put the uh, those red screws back into place uh, here to hold this hold this in. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and do that. But maybe I'll first I'll power it to make sure that little light works. Because it was kind of something I had to check on to see if it would go in there. So let's see it real quick. All right, so now red does go to red. And black does go to black. And let's make sure that we've got the... Where's the power switch? It's here. Let's put a knob into there. So that's off. Let's give it some power. Six volts. Okay, here's the power. Hey, it still works. And now I just want to check to see if the light comes on. And there's the light. All right, good. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to put the screws back into this and then put the knobs in and then we'll give it another check to make sure the radio functions work. And then we'll finish buttoning it up. You can watch. See if the light still works. It does. All right. So now let's get the uh, let's get the knobs in. See how's that look? All 
All right. Put this down here. Let's see if we get anything here. The over under is 55 and a half. Yes, I feel more confident in the over under. At a place in my life now, I experience that nostalgia for my. Right, seems to be working. I'm ready to put the uh, other half on now, and the handle. Put the handle on first. I'll get that on and bring it back after I get that part assembled. Okay, so I got the handle back on, and uh, I'm really about ready to put this thing back together again. Um, I've got the uh, new lines run in to the uh, external power connector. Okay, so the way the fella had this originally wired was he had the uh, hot lead, which if you remember was a, originally a gray wire, and this one, which is the negative lead, which he originally had as a red wire. He has the negative lead run to be the the pin, if you will, of the plug when you plug it in, and then the barrel of the of the plug he had wired to go to positive. And I know that people do have done that in the past. I don't. I, w I don't normally do that. I would normally have the positive in the middle. Uh, and I have years ago blew up a piece of equipment that didn't have voltage protection in it didn't have a voltage protection diode in it and the polarity of the power supply was backwards from the one that I plugged in and blew up a piece of equipment one time and it didn't blow it up it just made it broken <laughs> but uh, anyway um, I don't know that I want to do this this way I, I don't have a plug that goes into this you know a jack that goes into this plug um, I want to find out from the people who own this radio do they have the power supply that her grandfather had to work with this radio? If so, then I probably want to check it out, but I'll wire it up according to that power supply. If I were to switch this for whatever I would want to do, and then they later had that power supply and plugged it in, then they could reply reverse voltage to this. And I, I don't know that it has reverse voltage protection on it or not, but uh, I wouldn't want to count on it. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. What I did was I got this thing wired up with a power supply, hooked it up, and I've run this for over two and a half days continuously without turning it off. Different bands, just leaving it running all night. Uh, the radio works really, really well. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I didn't touch anything with it. It seems to be working fine. So in the meantime, what to do about this power supply thing. I've been giving it some thought and so here's something that I obtained. This is a uh, a jack. Sorry, this is a plug and this is a jack, okay? And this fits in here just fine. I'm going to go over this in just a minute, but one of the things you'll notice first off is that this has a red and a black lead and the red goes to the point here and the black goes to this point here if you can see this. So a little bit of information about these types of uh, plugs. The point on the end is called the tip abbreviated T. This part here is the sleeve abbreviated S. So this is called a TS type plug. Now this is obviously mono if you will if you were to use this for an audio circuit, if you were to have one for stereo, you'd have another kind of sleeve, if you will, with another black insulator. Now that, that one between the two insulators is called a ring. 
So that would be a TRS type plug. If you had one that had like a microphone, like you might have had on an iPhone or something like that, it would have another set of black rings in here. And that would be a TRRS type plug. So the T is the tip. The R's would be ring. This one does not have one since it's only two conductors. And then this back one is called the sleeve or S. So this is a TS connector. Now the T is connected to the red and the S is connected to the black. Now I did recall, remember having the discussion about whether the tip should be red or not. In audio, you know, to kind of imagine this is like a FOMO in an RCA type jack. This could be this could be shielded, right? So you might have like the ground connection, if you will, as a sleeve for, for noise protection. And then if that came up here to the sleeve, then that would protect from uh, interference up to the tip. And then normally this is plugged into a metal chassis, and this would be within the shield of the chassis. So this would be that would be a good way to do this for an audio, a shielded audio cable. This is not shielded. Um, another thing was is that, and, and I remember talking about this, you know, in the '70s when we're talking about cars, is if you had the tip was hot, think about how this is always going to land and touch things. It always touches on the tip, right? But you know, if you're just having it laying out, focus. But it'd be very difficult for the sleeve to touch things. Relatively, relatively less common that the the sleeve would touch something that it just lays against versus the tip would almost always touch. In a car, whatever it touches might be hooked to the negative terminal of your battery, in other words, ground. So you would not you would want that to be connected to the ground, not the hot, because otherwise you would short it. Now, that's just in cars. And that was kind of in my experience. Now this one is not audio and it is wired red for tip. Also, if you look at most power supplies these days, the, the middle conductor is positive not all of them there are that's a positive a positive type of supply they have some that are connected up for negative and I mentioned that earlier about having problems with those things in the past all right so another thing and we're going to talk about this a lot in just a minute another thing was I got this transformer six volt transformer and uh, wasn't very expensive and it is set up with a, a positive middle. So I was thinking, well, I could rewire this. And the idea is I want to cut this off and put this other plug on that I that I acquired. Okay, I'll, I'll do a substitution here. I could change this marking, but I've decided, bear with me for a minute, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to leave it like this. So I'm going to wire this for a positive tip. The chassis, by the way, is plastic. There's no, I've done continuity checks between the battery terminals and that whatever piece of metal is fixed out, there is no continuity. So, um, I'm going to wire this in accordance with this color and focus, please. And in accordance with this polarity, so that this will always be marked correctly from what's on the tip. Now, I want to show you something else that I think is really interesting uh, for how to wire this. I'm going to make another change to the way the, the grandfather wired this. Uh, I'm going to take you over and let you see another piece of equipment I repaired a couple of months ago. It's a little reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and it's got a, a factory power supply plug on it. And let me show you how that's wired, because I'm going to I'm going to try to use that as well. Bear with me; I got to move my camera. Okay, so what I have here is a uh, Vista little portable tape recorder. It's a Model 520. I repaired this several months ago. Um, but one of the reasons I've pulled this out is, is that this thing has a, uh, has a factory power jack on it. Okay. So we're going to see how this is wired up. I've already taken the screws out because I wanted to show this to you. Okay. So the jack is here. It's the same size jack, by the way, as the one that the uh, Panasonic radio is using. And so let me show you this jack, and we're going to zoom in on this so you can take a good look at it. Let me figure out how to do this. All right, 
perfect. So it's not really easy to see on this camera or on a camera. Let me get something to point to and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So on the pl on the uh, on the jack that's here, there's a number of wires that lead into it. There's three actually. So this 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 uh, this assembly has three connections on it, just like the one in the Panasonic radio has that the owner added. Now one of the things that's interesting is when you plug the jack in, the tip of it disengages a little leaf in here, if you will, and it breaks a connection. Now this is a case sometimes in radios when you'll, you get a radio that doesn't make any sound, and what happens is those contacts have gone bad, and it thinks it's trying to listen to an earphone or, or communicate with an earphone. And what it does in the meantime is it turns off the signal to the to the speaker. So you gotta do is clean those contacts and it's back. So that's the connection I'm talking about. Okay, so in this radio, what they've done, this radio is has a positive ground on it. I've checked it. So I've looked at where the, the batteries would go, where the positive lead is, and it goes right to ground. So this has a, a positive ground system on it. Not unusual. So what happens is, is that the positive lead comes up, as you can see it goes to this board, and it comes up here and goes to this motor, all right? Um, and then it continues on into the chassis. Now the negative lead is black, and it runs up, and you see it doesn't actually connect to the motor. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't shoot, I'm not showing you. You're not watching, hold on. There's the black lead, which is actually the chassis B minus, if you will, or the B minus for the radio comes off of here and it doesn't go to the, the motor. It bypasses the motor and goes back down. So what, and then comes over here to the battery. So what's happening is, is that the negative lead, which is the, the operative B minus for the radio, uh, it comes over and goes to the switch that's within this, this plug, this power supply plug. And normally then that power, that B minus, is transferred to this green line and the green line then goes on to the radio to do the functions in the radio okay so what you can think of is that this has a connection that just passes straight through that would be the chassis ground in this case it's the positive from the batteries then the other lead that is switched comes into basically a single pole single throw switch that's operated in here by this jack by plugging in the, the plug Okay, so you have one of the leads goes here as a potential source that is usually in, which is the batteries. And then if you put it into a plug, then the tip of that plug now becomes alternate source two. It disconnects source one, the batteries, and then it sends its source two to the output, which is output then to the radio. So I said all that to say is that you've got a single pole, single throw switch, normally in battery mode, but if you plug in the tip of the of a plug, it then switches to power supply mode. This location here goes to the radio. The normal closed position goes to the battery, and then when you plug in the tip, when it goes to here, that's for the power line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire that kind of configuration into the Panasonic, so then when I plug it in, it'll disconnect the batteries if they're in there, because otherwise it'll try to charge the batteries. So plug in, it'll disconnect the batteries and provide the power in. If you pull it out, then it would go switch back to the batteries. That's how these things were wired, and that's what I'm going to do. Now the I'll talk about the polarity in just a minute. Let's go back to the Panasonic. Okay, so now I want to talk about what we're going to do about the uh, polarity issue that I was concerned about. If we, if I put in a different, you know, arrangement for whether the tip was positive or negative, if the other power supply shows up and they plug it in would it damage the radio so I'm going to put in voltage protection so we always have it okay so let me just show you principle of what we're going to do if you're not familiar with it I'm sorry if you thought this was just going to be a cleaning a case video so so what we're going to have is we have a battery essentially which is six volts and let's say we bring this battery out and I'm going to leave a gap there for just a minute and we come here, and I'm going to say we're going to have a load on here. That's the radio, okay? And then the wire comes out. Comes over here like this. 
Now one of the things I could do is I could put a diode here so that positive always flows this way, conventional flow, right? And positive always flows this way, conventional flow, right? And I could do this, I could put a diode here and it's, it's low voltage so a 1N4001 would be fine. Uh, the problem is is that a diode when it's flowing like this full time you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take about three quarters of a volt. Now I'm starting at six volts already, so that's actually quite a big voltage drop, okay, for this thing to be having all the time uh, as a percentage of the of the operating voltage. And in fact, I've experimented a little bit with the power supply. If I drop this to 5.3, it doesn't sound good, okay. So we really don't want to do this. So there is an alternative. So forget doing this. So I'm just going to say, forget, I'm not going to have a diode there. There is another alternative. Now, remember the load always has some impedance in it. So one of the things you can do is you can bypass the load like this. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to turn the diode kind of backwards, if you will. So now if you look at the way this thing is flowing normally, okay, conventional flow, the, the uh, positive comes out, comes through here, sees a load, but it also sees a diode, but it's wired such that it sees the cathode of the diode. So the diode does not transmit the current. The current won't go through this way. Okay, So that stops it. So all the current, when it's wired properly, when the right plug is put in, it goes through the load and operates the radio as it should, and there's no voltage drop. Okay ideal. Now if somebody plugs in a different plug that's got reverse polarity on it that maybe has a negative for the tip, okay, what will happen is, is imagine now this is plus and the plus comes this way, it sees a relatively high impedance for the load but it also sees a diode from the correct direction and the diode will allow this to freely, you know, transmit the current and come this way. So what it does is it may, if they plug it in backwards this bypasses the radio. It protects the radio and then the the uh, the current limiting capacity capability of that uh, transformer takes over. Now if the transformer wasn't properly designed you know okay maybe it needs to have a fuse or something in here but these things I think are designed with a, maybe a, a, a thermal trip on it or something like that to protect those things. Uh, if I was doing this inside of a a big metal chassis radio I'd probably put in a couple of fuses. I'd put like a 2 amp here and put in like a, a 0.5 here or something like that and that would protect it but I don't think it's really necessary. I think the transformer will take care of itself and this will protect the radio and so this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to wire in the switch to be a single pole, single throw switch and I'm going to put a diode across the load on it so that will also provide voltage protection and then I don't have to worry about them you know, having a different transformer and plugging it in and having it being reverse polarity. This will protect the radio. So that's what I'm going to do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a, a 1N 4001. I think this has 50 volts uh, capacity on it. And that'd be more enough. And I've got a bunch of these. So that's what I'm going to do. So in order to do that, I need to run a wire that comes from a battery terminal to the plug and then goes back to provide it to the radio, if you will. Now I can do it here on the negative side or I could do it over here on the positive side. Frankly, I've got more room to work over here on the positive side. And since the radio chassis is seems to be pretty well isolated, I don't think the radio is going to mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run two wires. I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to run two wires from here. That'll be source one, the battery, if you will, and then the output, if you will, that comes from the switch and goes to the radio. That will run down. I'm going to take this back out of the chassis, out of the case, and I'm going to run it underneath this metal plate where the batteries go. I'm going to just run it along here. It's DC. It's not going to cause any interference. I'm going to bring it along here. I'm going to disconnect the lead that goes to the radio, which is here. That'll be the output. And then this one will be the battery source one, if you will, that goes to the switch. Now, I've got some doubles, uh, double lead um, wire it's black and red of course so now that messes up my whole philosophy about keeping my color straight but I'm gonna do it so 
I'm going to have a lead that comes back here that'll be red. That'll be the output of the switch that says this is going to the positive terminal. From the battery, I'm going to bring the black lead and bring it up here to source one on the switch. Okay. Uh, then source two, which would be from the tip, will then come back over here and wire into the red lead into the radio. In order to prevent confusion, that will that'll be that'll be red. I want that one to be red. The one from the battery will be black. But I don't want to have two black leads here, creating some confusion here. So I think what I'll do, and I know you're going to make, make everybody mad, but instead of using black here, I'm going to use the next best thing is I'm going to make this green. Okay? I know it's not ground. Hopefully, if anybody's in here working on this, they'll be able to take a look at what we did and understand it. That other tape deck used green. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use green from here to here, and that should be pretty clear. So... This will be the 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 uh, the sleeve lead that comes from the switch, and it'll go to negative, and then the tip lead will be source two. Source one is the battery, and the output will go to the red lead into the radio. So that's the plan. And then what I'll do is I'll rig up a one four double oh one between the uh, green and the red, which is the output and the uh, negative going here. And I'll arrange the uh, I'll arrange the cathode for the diode to be pointing towards the uh, the uh, the positive. Um, so we'll see when we get this all in here, and we'll see how it looks. I think I'm going to have room because this bit here tucks into here. I'll see if I can rig the diode up in here where it's not going to get into trouble. I have really short leads; it'll be like point-to-point -point wiring, which I'm familiar with. So we'll see if we can get that to work, and then this radio will be finished. Okay, that's the plan. Okay, so here's how the, this is the plug and the jack. This is how they look, I'm sorry, the jack and the plug. <laughs> and uh, so what I've done is I've, I don't know if you can see that, but I've put some color with a Sharpie on some of these terminals. So there's red, and there's black, and there's green, if you can see that that's green. So there's green, black, and red. And here you can see that little switch that takes place. So you might not be able to see it, but it's making contact now between this, between this leaf and where the tip will rise. So if I put a plug into there, maybe you can see what happens. Now, see if we can get this on the camera. You can barely see it, but these two points separated right in here. Right there, they separated. So the little S-shaped piece, which touches the tip, is actually the common. That's going to go to the radio, and it's switching from either coming from the battery, which is what is contacting if the plug is not in there, or if I plug the plug in, then it's disconnects the battery and it gets supply from the power supply. So I'm trying to represent that here. So here's that switch here. And here's the plug. And so the way the plug is wired is positive is red, goes to the tip. The barrel, or the sleeve rather, is black here. That's what you're seeing here in these wires there. Okay, I've wound this out. And then using a continuity checker, what I've done is verified what goes here. So let's look at what the wiring is going to be. The power supply negative is going to come in here, go through the sleeve, and then contact the inside of the body of this, and it's going to go to the negative plus, the B, B negative at the radio, where the negative terminal of the batteries are. I'm not switching that line. I'm just going to join it up. I'm going to be using a green wire to go join up with the battery compartment negative. Okay, so there's going to be a green wire. And then if you come here, you'll see that I've got the the common of the switch, if you will, the output of the switch. It's going to come out of here, and it's going to be red. And it's going to go to the B plus line going into the radio, near where the positive side of the battery terminals are, but not going to be directly connected. Now the battery plus in the battery compartment is going to be black and it's going to come up and come into this part of the switch right here. So when this is out, these two will connect. 
the positive from the battery will come through and connect up and go into the B plus of the radio which is what we want and because the negative of the batteries are plugged in over here where the green goes it'll go ahead and go into the radio of B, uh, the B minus as well okay so now I'm gonna have two other points so I've got a green let me make a spin there's three terminals on this um, jack I've labeled them green black and red okay a, I've got connected to the green, I've, I'm calling connected to the green, and B, I'm calling connected to the red, all right? And between those two, I'm going to wire in this diode. I believe I've got that wired correctly. So if I get negative coming in this way, let's see, if I have negative coming in from here, it's going to come into the tip, it's going to come here, the negative will go to B. If negative comes to B, then this will flow, and it'll bypass the radio which is what we wanted to do because then it'll come into here and then come out to the power supply negative so that's what I'm going to wire up the next thing hopefully you'll see is this all wired up okay a uh, status update I uh, did the soldering of the connection here I'll put a photograph here where you can see it up close where I showed the connections I've got the uh, cathode side to the positive that goes to the B plus of the radio so that if this gets plugged in backwards it'll bypass the radio and not damage it if it gets reverse polarity to it. The negative from the power supply goes to the B minus with this green wire. The black wire is an input from the battery pack positive side. So this is zap this is a you know zap strap kind of thing a uh, red and black joint pair. So I ran it out, pulled the chassis up enough where I could run it underneath the battery compartment and brought it around to the side here and so what we have over here if I can show you if it'll focus is I've got the black lead that goes to the switch is now coming from the positive of the batteries and then the red coming back from the common of the switch comes in here and I've got it soldered to the B plus that goes into the radio here. So now I'm ready to uh, put the battery compartment cover back on and uh, button this thing back up. I need to put the screws back in obviously for the chassis and then button this thing up and uh, the radio will be completed on this uh, reassembly. Okay so we got the assembly uh, redone. We got the handle on that looks nice and uh, I think it looks looks pretty good I mean uh, it's got some scratches and so forth uh, you would too at your at this age um, when it's done I'll uh, you know I'll take this tape off and clean it off underneath the tape where it was so that'll, that'll look the same dial turned out uh, really clean looks good in here there's our power port we're going to test that out. Yeah. Oh, looks good. So let's uh, let's give her a try. So let's back up. Got the power supply set here for six volts, and I have it hooked up to a plug with the red lead going to the tip. I'm the truth. Plug it in good and all the way in. Okay, I got current turned down pretty low just in case I've done something wrong here. But we'll just see. So another thing I've done is I've cleaned up the antenna, gave it a little thin amount of lubrication to help it, and you'll notice it doesn't swing around loose anymore. It pops into five positions around as a detent, so it'll stay put. You know, even if you tip it over, it'll stay put in one place. 95, seven the spot. So that's FM. Get the trailer on. It's a quick band scan here. 
and um, the new variant. That's with the AFC on. Turn it off. It's pulling in stations pretty well. Sounds pretty good. Go to AM. Some interference going on in here, but it's picking up stations pretty well in here. Turn off my soldering, desoldering station, so that helps a little bit. And uh, yeah, medium band needs the external antenna put into it. But yeah, I mean. So on Smashing Pumpkins, uh, I think I'm ready to say this thing's done. Now I'm going to work on the power supply and hook it up for this uh, plug. All right, so thanks for uh, following me along on this. This thing had a number of issues with it. It was uh, primarily the switch it was very dirty, so that uh, AM didn't work at all when we turned it on. And uh, FM did work initially, but then once we started moving the band switch, it dropped out. And then so we just cleaned up the cleaned up the switches and then dealt with uh, how to make it to where they could use this with a power supply like the original owner did and uh, continue to save the this you know keep this radio going for another 50 years let's say all right so this was a long one thanks for hanging with me on this one hope you enjoyed it see you soon bye so tube 75 is right here and uh, I'm looking for pin 3 and 4 which are together which is the output of the second IF to see if we're getting the signal there as well. Um, and then if so, then we'll be into the audio chain here.